in the book, I have this opening story to make the case, which is in Vietnam, uh, over the course of that 10-year war, uh, we won almost every major battle we fought. And most people don't know that. We actually won most, most, most of the battles we fought, uh, most major battles. Uh, over the course of those 10 years, we lost 58,000 uh, soldiers and Marines. They lost uh, over 3 million. And so it raises the very interesting question. If you win the battles and you decimate your enemy, how do you lose the war? And so that's one of the things that got me interested in, in this definition of the infinite game, which is clearly there's more than one definition of winning and losing. Um, uh, and in this case, America was fighting with a finite mindset in an infinite game. They were fighting to win, and the Vietnamese were fighting to survive. And they would fight to the very last person if necessary. And a finite player, who's playing with a finite mindset in Infinite Game, where you're, uh, the other players are playing with the right mindset, will always find themselves in quagmire, always. And the resource, the, 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 the currency of an Infinite Game is will and resources. Resources is obvious, in business it's money. In war it's money too. Um, but there's will of the people. Remember, we left Vietnam because of the will of the people back home. Yeah. And and will is one of those things that's very often forgotten. Companies think they're strong when they're rich. Enron was rich. GE was rich. GE is a shadow of its former self, you know? Uh, but what was the will of the people? You know, when, when, when the foundation shook, did they abandon ship for themselves, or did they hunker down and come together? And our nation, because of this obsession with finite-mindedness for the past 30 or 40 years, which means you know, a couple of generations were raised with that mentality, and they were told that you will excel in, at work and in your career if you, if you do this. And now they're the senior executives operating under that mentality. Under that training. So our nation, double, we, we over-indexed rugged individualism, and we forgot cooperation. You know, there's an entire section in the bookshop called self-help, an industry, by the way, that was invented in the 1970s. <laughs> There's an entire industry, there's an entire section of the bookshop called self-help, and there's no section of the bookshop called help others. You know, in politics, compromise has become a dirty word. And the reality, if, you've, if you have been, if you are married, or if you have a relationship, um, good luck with, with trying to always be right. Like, compromise is listening, you know, give and take. That's part of the game for success. Mm -hmm.